Welcome to another Alice tutorial. In this tutorial, which I'm going to call Curveball, I'm going to get a baseball, which we can see up there in the left hand corner, to move in the shape of a sine curve in two dimensions. So effectively, it's going to move in this sort of shape here. So to do that, I'm going to use some of the built in mathematical functions in Alice. I'm going to use a loop and I'm also going to use a number of variables. So we're going to introduce the three main concepts. Alrighty, so I've added my object. The, so the first thing I want to do is when I'm thinking about moving this baseball, effectively what we want to do is we want to move the ball up and forward at the same time. So this suggests we're going to need a do together. And we're going to do a baseball move. We're going to move it up. And for now, it just gets moved one meter. We will change that later. And move it forward one meter as well. Now, I've actually set up the baseball so the forward direction is facing to the right. So it's facing across in this direction here. Okay. So let's just simply play that to see what it's doing. And we can see that it goes up and it goes across the screen at the same time. Not quite what we're after yet. Next thing I'll do is I'll introduce a loop and I'll get it to, for now, loop 10 times. And we'll drag this code into here. And if we run that now, we'll see that the baseball simply disappears off the screen. Alrighty, again, not quite what we're after. So what I'm gonna do now is start introducing a few variables. So the first variable I'm gonna introduce is one to keep track of the initial starting position of the baseball above the ground. So I'm going to call that start y pos, and it's going to be a number. Then to give it set a value for that particular variable, what I need to do is drag that into my code and set it, and initially I just set it to 1. And notice I've put this initialization outside of the loop. That's important. And what I really want to do is set that to the distance, oops, distance above, in fact, the ground. So initially the Y position, so if I think of Y as going up the screen, the X position going across the screen here, the initial Y position is the distance of the baseball above the ground. Now I'm also going to require a variable to keep track of the current Y position, because obviously as we move across the screen the Y position is going to change and again we'll copy that down there and initially that's going to be the same as the starting Y position. I'm going to need two more variables. One is the new Y position to keep track of as it's moving where it's changing to or, or predicting where it's going to move to and another variable called delta y. We're just going to represent the difference between the new y position and the current y position. So half, how far it's actually going to move uh, in the y direction each time we go around the loop. So I don't need to actually initialize them here, they're going to be initialized inside of the loop. So the first thing I want to do is within the loop calculate the new y position. So let's just set it to a default value of 1 to begin with. But what we're actually going to do here is that's going to equal the starting Y position. And we're going to add to that. So add. We'll put 1 for now, but we're going to use the sign function. So again, we need to go back up to the world object. And the world object in its functions has a number of mathematical functions available. So in this case I'm going to use the sine function. And for that I want to, actually I need to show the complicated version of the, the loop here. And I'm going to use the sine value at the index. Now the index is actually representing the x value or the x coordinate. So notice it's going to start off at zero. So that's the zero x coordinate all the way across to 10 for this particular loop. Right, so that gives us the y value. Now, 
we need to actually calculate how far to move the thing. So we don't want to actually move it by a new position each time because we're going to end up, it's going to go away off the screen. So actually what we're going to do is move it by the amount it changes, so the delta. Set value, and that's going to be the current position. In fact, it's going to be the new position, I should say. New position, subtract. So we go subtract here, the current position. So that's how far it's going to change in its Y coordinate. Once we've done that, then we need to update the current position. We can either do that at the end of the loop here, or we can do it at this point here. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to set that to new position. Okay, so we've initialized all our variables, we've set them accordingly within the loop. Now we want to use them. So the forward, in this case, we're still going to move the baseball forward one meter. That's not going to change. But for this one, rather than moving up one meter, we're actually going to move it up by this distance delta. Alrighty, let's see what we've got there. Okay, what we've got there is a very rough approximation of a sine curve. It's very jagged at this stage. To make it less jagged, what we want to do, rather than taking points at one meter intervals, sample points, we want to change that. Instead we're going to take a point at every point one meters. So we go in here, edit that, it's OK, and so that will then affect our, our index, that's fine, and we want to change this to then point one meters. Let's have a look at the effect of that. And let's speed it up a bit. And we can see now we've got a much, much smoother curve appearing. Excellent. Now it's still a bit, the movement's still a bit jerky. We can improve it slightly by changing the style. We'll have an abrupt style. And both of these. Rerun it again. Speed it up. And we get a slightly smoother movement. It's not perfect still, but it's a lot better than what it was. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing we could change here is let's start the initial index position at point 1. And play that for the last time. Again, speed it up. And there we have it, baseball moving in a sine curve. Alrighty, that's it for today's tutorial.